Welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'll compare different types of electric water heaters. My last video about adding a flow regulator to a tankless electric water heater generated a lot of good conversations, and so I wanted to dive a little bit deeper. Before we had the tankless water heater installed in the house, we had a propane storage style heater. It worked okay, but it made some funny noises and it was about 30 years old, so it was about time to think about a replacement. On top of that, we were having solar panels installed on our house, and so it presented an opportunity to move more appliances from propane to electric. I think that in general, moving things from propane or natural gas to electric is good for the climate and good for the environment and good for us as a society, but I won't really dive too much into that in this video. If you're interested, put a comment below and maybe I'll do a video on that topic later. First, let's take a look at the different kinds of electric water heaters. Most common is the storage style, tank full, resistance water heater. This is what you'll find in most houses, either this one or a gas storage tank water heater. They carry a low to medium price point and a lot of handymen and plumbers know how to install these. This is probably what you have at home and it's a nice basic setup. That being said, depending on your electric rates and your usage, they can be the most expensive type to actually run. The second kind, which is similar, is called a hybrid or heat pump water heater. These are gaining in popularity in the US. They use a tank, much like the resistance kind, but they use some interesting properties of physics to heat up the water more efficiently. These can come with a higher upfront cost, although there can be rebates and credits that can help bring that down. These heaters take up a little bit more space than a regular tank water heater, but they can be swapped in place of them pretty easily. They should save you a lot on your electric bills, but it can depend on things like how much you're using water, where they're installed, and what your electric rates are. Third is the tankless water heater, which I chose. These are surprisingly compact, and they can come with a low upfront cost to buy the unit, although they can be a lot more expensive to install, which I'll get into later. These use the same resistance heating as a storage style water heater, but with a much higher current, and they only heat on demand. So depending on how often you're using water in your house, you may or may not actually save money using a tankless option, and we'll get into that in a bit. Finally, solar water heaters are another option. I don't know as much about those, and so I'm not gonna dive into that as much, but comment below if you're interested, and maybe I will. Now that we've done an overview of the different kinds of water heaters, let's talk about the upfront costs. First, you have a storage style water heater. Traditional storage style water heaters will probably have the lowest upfront cost. As of February 2023, these can be found at Home Depot for around $400 to $800. They're pretty straightforward to install as well, especially if you already have the plumbing and electrical run and most plumbers, handymen, and maybe even the Home Depot delivery person, but don't take my word for it, can install these. Heat pump water heaters are more expensive up front. These right now are going for $1,700 to $3,000 at Home Depot, but you should do some research as these can come with a federal tax credit and a rebate from your local utility, which can really bring the price down maybe almost to the same level as a regular tank style. The installation process itself is very similar to a regular tank style. You just have an electrical hookup and a plumbing hookup and can really be easily to swap in for an existing tank style. Tankless water heaters can be really inexpensive up front. These are running from $300 to $600 at Home Depot and Amazon. They're pretty small and a UPS or FedEx guy can actually deliver these just like any package you order online. That said, Switching from storage to tankless can be quite expensive. We'll get into the details later on sizing, but depending on the unit you buy, you might need two, three, or even four 50 amp circuits to run a tankless water heater. If you have a 100 amp service, this probably isn't even gonna be an option. In our case, we were upgrading to 200 amp service as part of our solar installation, so this was a little bit of an easier add-on for us. In our case, installation was a two-phase process with both a plumber and an electrician. We had a plumber come in to reroute the plumbing for the new tankless unit and hook up the water. This is 
possibly a DIY project depending on how handy you are with copper pipes, but for me, I just wasn't comfortable yet. Once the plumber was done, then the electrician could come in and run the three circuits and connect the electricity. After the electrical was done, the tankless water heater was ready to use. And I have to say, it was kind of exciting to be able to just turn it on right away and get hot water without needing to wait for the tank to heat up. The cost for the plumbing was about $900. For the electrical work, it's a little harder to say since it was part of a bigger project, but it's probably safe to say that you could spend upwards of $1,000, depending on where your service panel and your water heater are located. Next, let's talk about sizing. For a traditional tank style water heater, you usually think about gallons. A typical unit might be 50 to 80 gallons, and this can provide enough water for 40 to 60 minutes of showering. For heat pump, the considerations are similar, but you may want to consider going with a little bit larger size. The recovery time for heat pump water heaters is a fair bit longer, it can be several hours. Now, this is where hybrid units come in and they can actually use a heating element in the unit to speed up the heating process. And you might not notice the slow recovery time, but using that heating element is actually gonna defeat a lot of the savings that you would normally get by using the heat pump. So you might wanna consider buying a slightly larger heat pump water heater, although that'll again cost you more money. For tankless, the math is completely different. Instead of thinking about volume, you have to think about flow rate. The tankless water heater can only heat up so much water by so many degrees at a time, so this will vary depending on your region and how much water you're planning to use. Since your input water temperature depends on your climate and the region that you're in, you'll need to refer to a map like the one you can find for EcoSmart products. In my case, I was lucky to be in Southern California where the water temperature is a little bit warmer, so I was able to power two showers from one 27 kilowatt tankless unit. If I was in Seattle or Minnesota, I might need a larger size heater, and this could come with requirements for even more circuits and drive the cost up even more. Okay, let's talk about energy costs. Since we're only comparing electric units, this is rather straightforward. Again, if you'd like me to compare with gas, let me know in the comments below, and maybe we can dive into that a little bit. With a regular traditional storage water heater, you have kind of a baseline of energy costs. The yellow energy guide tags show an estimated cost of about $489 a year, assuming an electricity cost of 14 cents per kilowatt hour, which is much lower than California, where it can be 35 to 55 cents per kilowatt hour, depending on time of day. This will also depend on your usage. In almost all cases, traditional storage style water heaters will have the highest cost to run. Energy usage is where heat pump water heaters shine. Their energy guide shows an estimated cost per year of $117, again, assuming those low 14 cent per kilowatt hour electric rates. This will depend on your usage and your savings will probably be most if you're regularly using the water heater and then allowing it to use the heat pump to recover the heat. Overall, based on these energy guides, we can estimate that heat pump water heaters can save about 2,500 kilowatt hours of electricity per year versus a traditional storage type. That said, if it gets too cold or you're using a lot of water, they can revert to using their resistance heating elements, which negates some of the savings. Another interesting caveat with heat pump water heaters is they actually use heat from the space around them. Since they're using the ambient heat, if you're actually heating your house, it's going to use some of that heat generated by your heater and actually drive your energy usage up. That said, overall the net usage will probably be lower, but you're going to be better off if you can put a heat pump water heater in, say, a basement or garage where it's not going to mess with the heat inside your conditioned space. For tankless, again, the math changes. The energy guide tags show an estimate of about $289 a year. Since it's not constantly heating your water, you can save a lot, especially if you aren't regularly using hot water. In our case, with a vacation house, I saw an opportunity for savings. That said, if you're using a lot of water regularly, a tankless might not really save you that much versus a traditional storage style. An added risk is the ease of taking long showers. 
with a regular tank style water heater, if you take a really long shower and use up all the hot water, you're gonna get cold and you're probably gonna wrap up your shower. But if you have a tankless unit, you might be tempted to stretch your showers longer and longer, and you could actually end up using more electricity if you're not careful. A cold shower is a good way to force you to conserve. Now let's talk about the climate and the grid. Since we're only talking about electric water heaters here today, really any water heater that can save you electricity is gonna be better for the climate. If you switch from a traditional storage water heater to a heat pump water heater, you're probably gonna save energy and thus reduce emissions from power plants. For the grid, there's an interesting side story. If you run a 27 kilowatt or a 36 kilowatt tankless water heater at full volume, you can actually cause a spike in electricity usage and you can see this when your lights flicker. Now, if lots and lots of people all started their showers at the same time, this could actually cause a burden on the electrical grid. That said, as a friend pointed out, showers kind of get spread out over random times and these spikes are likely to be lower than the normal day-to-day -day variations. So take this with a grain of salt, but it is an interesting discussion point. Finally, let's talk about the usability of these options. The traditional tank style storage resistance water heater is the baseline. You probably know how this works. If you use up too much water, take too long of a shower, it runs out and your water is cold. You can fill a bathtub, run a shower, run the washer all at the same time without worrying too much and you don't need to think about which climate you're in. Once you run out, it'll take a couple hours to heat up again. The heat pump style will be similar. As we mentioned before, it might be a little bit slower to reheat once you run out. One added concern with a heat pump water heater is that it is a more complicated appliance. If it fails, you may need to get an HVAC technician. I'm not really sure all the plumbers are aware of how to fix these things. And the lifespan that you expect might be shorter, although that's just a guess on my side. That being said, Keep in mind how much you might be saving in electrical costs and maybe it still makes economic sense to take the risk on added repairs. A few other considerations with the heat pump water heater are the size, the noise, and the cooling. As I mentioned earlier, they tend to be a little bit taller because they have that heat pump unit on top, so consider it when you're thinking about where you might install a heat pump water heater. Noise is another concern. Uh, much like refrigerators, these need to run a pump and a fan when they're uh, heating the water. And so you might notice a little bit of noise. Um, from what I've seen, the noise is similar to a refrigerator, so think about that. It might not be the end of the world, but it's something to keep in mind. Finally, with a heat pump water heater, it's actually going to have a cooling effect on the area around it. Since it's using the heat in the ambient environment, it's actually going to cool off the space around it. So if you have this in a living area, you'll want to consider whether that's a risk you're willing to take. These can be great for a space like a garage or a basement where you're not as concerned with the ambient temperature. Last but not least, there's tankless. As I mentioned before, tankless water heaters are surprisingly small, so they can go in tight closets. Uh, sometimes you can have them on the outside of the house, depending on your region. And you might even be able to put it closer to your shower to give you a shorter wait time and save water and electricity even more. One myth about tankless water heaters is that they provide instant hot water. Uh, just like with a storage water heater, unfortunately, you do have to wait until the cold water flows through the pipes. Uh, if you do want instant hot water, you're going to need a recirculating pump, which is a whole separate project, and I won't go into that just today, but it's something to consider. The main benefits, though, are that you don't have to worry about running out of hot water, and you don't have to heat water when you don't need it. The main downside of tankless water heaters is you have to think about flow rate. If you buy an undersized tankless water heater, you don't really have many options other than to either upgrade, which may require more circuits and may fill up your panel, or just deal with lukewarm showers. So you really wanna make sure that you're dialed in on getting the right size, or buy one size more than you need just so that you don't run that risk. Now let's talk about how I decided to go tankless. 
I knew we might need a new water heater soon, so I decided to do some research to make an informed decision. I made some assumption about energy rates and usage. I figured with a regular propane water heater, I would use about 250 gallons of propane per year, which at a $3.35 cost would be $838 a year. With a tankless propane heater, Assuming we averaged about 65% occupancy or having people in the house about two thirds of the year, you could imagine maybe saving a third of that money, bringing the cost down to $544. Now, that's not quite how things work because keeping the water warm doesn't cost as much as heating it up in the first place, but that'll give us an optimistic possible savings by going to a tankless propane unit. For the electric options, I calculated that we might need about 5,840 kilowatt hours of electricity per year for a traditional storage style water heater. At 35 cents per kilowatt hour, that's about, 2, that's about $2,044 per year. With a heat pump water heater, assuming about two to four times as efficient, that brings the cost for us down to about $700 per year. With the tankless electric, using the same 65% usage against the $2,044 for storage type, I estimated about $1,329 per year. I was curious how much energy a storage water heater uses just to keep water warm. This would tell me how much I could save by not leaving a water heater running between visits. It was surprisingly hard to find this information, but I found two posts online that suggested about one and a half kilowatt hours per day just to keep the water warm. This would mean about 45 kilowatt hours per month, or in my case, about $18. Over the course of the year, that would be about $216. So it's not a massive savings, but you know, it's not nothing. So the true savings I'm going to get here is probably somewhere between that $216 and the $700 I estimated earlier. So the cheapest electric option would have actually been the heat pump water heater, but we decided to go tankless for two reasons. Number one, the endless hot water could actually be an amenity to our Airbnb guests. We want to be able to host up to eight guests at a time, and we don't want to get negative reviews from guests who try to take showers back to back and run out of hot water. Second, by going tankless to start with, it gives me flexibility down the road. By running those three electrical circuits now, if I decide later that I want to switch back to heat pump water heater, I've already got the electrical run and I don't need the electrician to come back. Whereas if I had installed a heat pump water heater now and decided to go tankless later, I'd need to have new circuits run. I was also curious to see how tankless models would work and now I'm getting at least two YouTube videos out of it, right? Before I wrap up, I wanted to talk about how it's going so far. Overall, it's great. I did some work to add a flow regulator. You can see that in my other YouTube video, and I'm thinking about adding some flush valves later. So between these, there's a little bit of a learning curve to getting used to tankless water heaters, but it's been an overall good experience. And it's nice not having to worry about switching it off and on between visits. So I hope you got something out of this video. If you thought of something I missed, don't be a stranger in the comments. Let me know if you'd like to see more of this informational style video in addition to my regular how-to videos. And as always, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. Goodbye.